family and friends and YouTubers, Kim here at Hancock Homestead and Gardens. And today is a beautiful fall day. And I thought that while we had the nice weather, I would do a quick walk around of our homestead and show you some of our hopes and dreams for the upcoming year. This year, our goal was to get done the big chicken house, the brooder house, and the potting shed. And we got those things accomplished. So they're up and running for our new chicks in the spring. Now we have other goals to move on to. And we hope that you will stick with us as we accomplish these goals and see our progress here on the farm and on our homestead. We have been here since 1851. The Hancock family has been here since 1851. We're not quite that old. <laughs> but, uh, Every generation adds its own touch, and we'd like to see what some of our touches might be. If you hear booms in the background, it's because it's deer hunting season. So don't let those scare you. Everything's fine. All right, here we go. Okay, so Paul and I are standing on the east porch which is the main porch that we use. And if you look out across, this is what you're gonna see. There's where we usually park the cars. We hope that someday we're gonna have an addition out there. That's why there's concrete going all the way around. It's like a, con a concrete foundation. We poured it in hopes that we could add a room and then there used to be a fence that ran the whole perimeter of the yard. Let's see if I can walk without tripping over these walnuts. Look, <laughs> my ground is covered in walnuts. I mean, they're just all over the place and I'm trying to walk through them without tripping. So here we go. Okay, so there's the old fence post and like I said it ran down the whole perimeter of the yard but it was getting pretty old so and we had a fire that burnt up the fence post we hope to one day put another fence in okay so the next thing are the raised beds I had John put in these raised beds this spring because I wanted to try the square foot gardening method and also because I was hoping it would help with my arthritis but we didn't get anything planted and um, it just rained and rained and by the time we got the boxes built and the soil in and we just ran out of time to do the vegetables and um, and then John he didn't even get our garden plot put in the row garden so hopefully we'll get that done next year too. So one of the goals for next year is to get our vegetable garden going. And then after that is the brooder house. And we hope to have chicks in there. And we also hope to have a better pen or at least get this pen fixed. And then the chicken house we hope to have chicks and turkeys and guineas and maybe some pea fowl. And I hope to have a pen coming out from the east door so that the chicks can have a place to run around and uh, be safe. And then on this side we also hope to have another pen for the chicks to run out and have a safe place and then it's the potting shed and I hope to have windows in it so I can use it to grow seedlings and then from the potting shed over to the cottage garden that I hope next year I can have better control of this year it seemed like there were way too many weeds and not enough flowers but uh, I hope next year to get a better grip on the weeds 
and to put in more flowers. There are the last of the zinnias. And we hope to put gravel in around this pump because it's hard to control the weeds back there. So with some gravel, we're hoping to suppress the weeds. Okay. So I hope my cottage garden looks more like a cottage garden instead of a weed patch. And then that brings us to the orchard. And hopefully next year this orchard will be more full, fuller of trees. Those cherry trees are going to come out and be burned because if you remember they had that brown rot fungus which will continue to spread. So we're going to take them down this winter, put down some fungicide, and then plant more trees to get our, our orchard up and running again. Every generation kind of has to put in a new orchard. The first generation had an orchard, and then Austin and Emma's generation had an orchard, and then John and I, we put in these trees when I was pregnant with Paul. So they're about 26, 27 years old, and uh, uh, trees only last maybe 30, 35 years at best. So every generation has to replace the apple orchard, the fruit orchard, with new trees. And uh, we've had some bad luck with ours because we had a windstorm take out two rows, and then we had... Um, the fungus come in and take out our cherry trees. But that's okay, that's mother nature and we'll just replace them in the spring. Okay, so now I'm headed over to the barn. Okay, and so then the next thing is the barn. And uh, we have several goals for it. Several projects. Um, I want to get up the double doors that used to hang there and then get the uh, doors on this side fixed up, make them more stable. And the whole thing needs a paint job. We want to get the outside painted white and, uh, and then get the roof painted gray and give it a nice paint job brighten it up a little bit. But the barn is old. It's over 125 years old and it's still standing so we're doing pretty good. But we just have a little bit of repair work to do and a little bit of um, cosmetic work to do on it. So, okay. Okay, and so another thing that we really want to get done is we want to get a fence put back up around the pasture. We had the old fence torn down because it was just getting too old and bent. But we want to get the pasture enclosed again. And I want to make a little pin going out the back for my goats. And then we also want to put the fence back up going from the barn over past the machine shed and back because um, of the pond. We have a grandson now and we hope to have more grandchildren and we just want to make sure that they aren't able to get out to that pond. So fencing is another goal. Okay, so next spring I hope to have this barn filled with a few animals. Over here in this part, I want to add a couple of doors back up there and then put my rabbits back in here all along those tables and make this the rabbit room. And then over on this side, we need to repair some doors. And then I'm not sure what John wants to put in here. He talked about maybe putting some more animals in here. 
we'll see. But if I walk to the back of the barn, to the north side, I want to put some goats back in there. I'm going to try some milk goats and hopefully maybe even do some kidding later on. Okay, so now out of the barn. You come in, Paulo. And then, as we walk out of the barn, take you over here to our pond that just gets smaller and smaller every year. And this year it's even the smallest yet because it has no water in it. But I hope to someday get that redug and back to its original size because it was a fairly large pond at one time. I don't believe it's ever had fish in it. Or did it have catfish? Maybe it had catfish. But um, anyway, it was mostly used for the livestock drinking hole. It would be a pretty cool place to put catfish if it was dug out to the right proportions and the right depth. Okay, so another goal, catfish pond. Okay, and then from the pond, we're back to the machine shed. And uh, John asked me not to show the inside of the machine shed at this time, and I respect his wishes. And then if you look, we've made a complete circle, and we are back to the barn lot and the apple orchard in the background. Isn't that a beautiful sight? I just love it here in the country. Okay, so now we're on the west side of the house. My future goal is to have more bushes planted along the roadway here and more trees. We're gonna have to replace that old Colorado blue spruce because it's getting pretty old and dying. And then up here on the west side, I really need a flower bed. And then over here is the south side. And once again, I need a bed, a flower bed, maybe some bushes. Okay, so another to do, another flower bed to go in. All right, and there's Paulo's little home. So, now we're around, back to the front. Well, we have just returned to the back door again. And we took a walk of the whole homestead. And you got to hear what all my hopes and dreams are for it. I'm not sure exactly when we'll get them all accomplished, a little bit at a time. I hope that you will subscribe to the channel and come back in 2016 and see where our progress is, and join us on our homesteading journey. Thank you. This is Kim at Hancock Homestead and Gardens. Bye for now.